call the April 18th, 2022 uh, regular select board meeting to order. With us is Flo Smith, Joe Stahl, uh, Vince Conti is with us via Zoom, kinda, and uh, Diane Isabel. Uh, let's see here, additions or changes to the agenda? You're muted. <laughs> two, two additions. Uh, uh, I'd like to add the Fisher Road paving uh, on there. We received that from uh, Pike this week, just recently. Uh, I can talk a little bit about that when we get that there. And just the four April minutes are in the package. They've been added since the agenda came out. Okay. Um, any public comment? Anything else? Any public comment? Hearing none, uh, Rainbow Bridge Community Center request for ARPA funding. Yeah, was, uh, Greg Forbes was supposed to be joining tonight, but he hasn't. He has not joined. There is a letter that explains it in your package. Community center in Gary. Let the record show that. Let <laughs> 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 has, has joined oh, yeah. us. <laughs> joined the meeting. I don't so, have a good excuse either. I should have just skipped the round of golf. I played just before I got here. I would have been a lot happier. <laughs> so they're home. they're not either Orca or here. So no, they're they're not. Uh, so we're taking uh, skip on to. Uh, We'll skip on to um, Central Vermont Runners Club permit. Yep, this is the, uh, again, it's, there's a copy of it in, in your package. Um, please don't forget to sign it if you approve it tonight. Um, it's for the, uh, the yearly race that they hold on the Junction Road. Are they going to take and put up their signs again and everything? Yep, it's their uh, 44th annual 10K road race. Uh, have a motion on that? I make the motion to approve the 44th annual road race by Central Vermont Runners and the special event permit that we have in our packet, all the details included, and the date of the event is June 11, 2022. They have an estimated attendance of 100. Time of the event is from 9 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. 10.30 a.m. Here, a second? A second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, board reappointments. Okay, so this is a little bit lengthy. I, uh, but we've had some, again, that have been uh, expired for some time that we've reached out to. They're still interested in being on these boards. Uh, and we have some new ones as well. Uh, for example, the uh, Economic Development Committee. So in your packet, there is a package of a page and a quarter of all the appointments that are expired or expiring or, or due to be reappointed, including uh, also the tree warden. Um, Mr. Wilcox, Dave Wilcox, yep. um, has expressed his interest and he is certainly very qualified for that role as well. Uh, so you'll see him there on there also. Uh, if you have any questions with any of the specifics, uh, please just let me know. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, to reappoint these folks, um, I suppose we should do them by uh, board. I make the motion to approve uh, Randy Herring to March 2023 for the Cemetery Commission. A second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Motion carries. Uh, South Vermont Fiber. I make the motion for Jeremy Hansen to continue through March 2023 for Central Vermont Fiber. 
A second. second. Yeah. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. And as an Motion alternate, carries. Jerry Diamantides to March 2023, also for Central Vermont Fiber. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion Aye. carries. Uh, Before we go on, can I ask a question? Sure. So, with the names and the rest of these boards, does that make the boards folder? We're not short anyone. Um, no. No. Okay. <laughs> Planning there commission. There are still some vacancies, and I'll continue to keep those posted and updated on our on our website as well. For example, the Economic Development Committee is a board of five, and we're just restarting that. We have three, so there's there's two right there. Yeah. Most of the others are. are there may be one uh, on the public works board, but uh, most of them, I think with the exception of the cemetery commission, are within one person of being full. Okay, Very thank good. you. And I can, I'll get those details out for you. Development right, review, review board. I make the motion to reappoint Bob Warnick through March 2023, Carla Nuizel through March of 24, John Frederick, March of 2024, and Tour Nelson through March of 2025. Your second? I second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, Planning Commission? I make the motion to approve Tony Snow through March of 2025 and Amanda Smith through March of 2024. I second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, Public Works Board. I make the motion to approve Rob Allen through March of 2024 and Ted Long through March of 2023. Your second? I second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, Recreation and Parks Committee. You're on the roll. You're in. I make the motion to approve my, uh, Mike Noyes through March of 2023, Jeffrey Farrell through March of 2023, and Hannah Connor through March of 2024. Your second? I second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, representative to the Transportation Committee for, at Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. I hereby recommend Bob Warnick continue through March of 2023 with a representative to, oh, that's separate, or is it? Yeah. Also the representative to the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission for CVRPC. Rob Wernick, March of 2023. A second. Any discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, alternate. And the alternate rep would be Carla Nuizel through March of 2023. Second. Okay, and um, any discussion on that? Hearing none, look all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, representative of the Central Vermont Solid Waste Management District. I make the nomination for Pat, uh, Matt Levin through March of 2023 to continue. Any second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Economic Development Committee. I make the motion to have Roberta Matt Haskin through March of 2023, Theron Lay Sleeper through March of 2023, and Wayne Lamberton also through March of 2023. Second. Any further discussion? Yes, I'd actually like to contribute. Uh, I'm not sure how active the committee is, but I have spoken with former select board chair, uh, Pat McDonald, and she's interested in participating or contributing to the Economic Development Committee in some way. So if that's an active board, um, 
I don't know if they could contact her or if you can. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll uh, take care of that. I'll reach out to her and uh, right. I'll get her on here for an appointment at the, what's the, at the next meeting. What's the membership on that board? Five. Five, okay. Great. Wonderful. Thank you, Kirk. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. And uh, for Tree Warden? I make the motion for Dave Wilcox through March of 2023 as our tree warden here in Berlin. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Okay. Uh, Audit RFP review and discussion plan. Okay. Vince. Vince had it. Okay. No. No, okay. <laughs> so this is for audit services, right? And I, I think yeah. uh, Diane may want to speak a little bit about this and the uh, and the, the need and the urgency to to move right. forward for those auditing time. services. We've had Father Gill and Segali now for six years. Uh, there's only like two firms in the area that that are doing it that I'm aware of right now. And since the term is up, we need to get somebody immediately because I have to be able to um, to coordinate with that person so they'll have the audit done timely. So the sooner we can send it out. And uh, I do believe that we will be having um, a single audit as well, which will add to the cost. And this past year, um, the audit was $18,000. And that's basically, I think we have like maybe 19 in the budget for the next year, not exactly soon. So. You're also to send their RFPs out. Yeah, there's, there's copies of, of the draft. It looks it looks basically it's almost word for word from the last yeah. one that was actually used. So, um, yeah, I just need uh, the board's approval to proceed with that, and we'll send it out for somewhere between three and five RFPs. <clears throat> we'll, we'll we'll send out to get some proposals back. Can I have a motion to uh, put out the RFP for the uh, audit review? I make the motion to move forward with the audit, audit RFP as presented to us this evening for review. Here's a second. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, and the cleaning RFP. Now that one's a joyful read if you'd like to. That's uh, pretty extensive. Um, the reason for that is, again, I'm trying to standardize and make them reasonably professional RFPs that, that go out. We have someone uh, that uh, has expressed interest in bidding already, uh, so we'll have that person and the, the current person as well. Uh, but I'd like to find a couple more um, for the cleaning services for here and for the police. Um, you know, in talking with the staff, there's there's been a fair number of issues that um, they're not entirely happy with with the services that we're currently getting and and, and paid for so um, and it's due uh, to, to go out anyway um, so again that I'm wait that the one thing I'm waiting on for this RFP because it's so extensive is our attorneys review of it to make sure that it's in line with uh, what we need but it's very extensive it even has a list of what they do and how many times a week they do that uh, as part of the service to commit to so I will expect, I do expect the cost to go up a little bit because it's a little more extensive. We're asking them to clean a little bit more um, and, you know, take care of things here. So uh, what you were not happy with with the last contract, has that been addressed in this RFP? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. This one, there, there, there wasn't a real contract, per se, with any detail to it for the last one, uh, hence this one. It's pretty detailed. Okay. Um, a motion on that? To put out the uh, RFP for the cleaning services? I make the motion to go forward with putting out the RFP for the cleaning services as presented. After lawyer's approval? Yes, after the lawyer's <laughs> approval. Do I hear a second? Second. Any further discussion? 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, local emergency management presentation. Yes. Hi, Bruce. Good evening, Bruce. Oh, uh, good evening, everyone. Um, it's that time of year again that the state requires that we submit a uh, updated or revised uh, local emergency management plan. Uh, just our um, our uh, checklist of the people we would contact, uh, the where the local shelters are, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, every year we do a review to make sure the the numbers are up to date. Um, and uh, have the right contacts in there. And so uh, that's what we've uh, submitted for your approval tonight. So Bruce, just so you're aware, right? They, they received a copy of that electronically as well, the board did. And Flo, you have a copy since you're the only one that has gone through the testing, just that is certified to sign that. There's a copy there for you to sign tonight, please. And where is the copy to review right now? I don't see it in my packet. Uh, there's one copy on the table with a red flag on it for your signature. Okay, very good. Excellent. What testing and certification is that that you took? That I was just going to ask um, one question of Vince first is when is the last time that the testing needs to have been done to make sure that I'm valid in signing That's a great it? question that I don't know the answer mm -hmm. to, but I'll have mm -hmm. to look that up. I consistently took it up through, I want to say, 2019. Okay. But I haven't since. Maybe in 20, Bruce, but it would be right in that vicinity. That I don't. I'll have to research it. Um, from my perspective, the there's no expiration date for that. There's no requirement for retesting. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a good idea to have it uh, at least every years because some of that information, if it's not used regularly, uh, except like in emergencies. Um, but there's nothing in my to my knowledge that anybody's ever said that you have to uh, have that. A certain within a certain time period. Excellent, because I know I've done three to five of them, and I did them consistently and renewed them, um, but I'm just not certain. So that's good to know. Good to know. There are trainings that you can do online, and when I was at the transportation agency, they were required, and they were required consecutively every certain amount of years. And then when I moved to a different position, I just continued to do it. But I think it was 19 or 20 the last time I did. So do you I know what the name of the name the ICS. ICS, yes. So 100, like 100, 400, 200, 700, 300. Yeah. And I think I did 501 and okay. a few others. I, I think I've taken 100 and 200. So Excellent, yeah, so. great. That's wonderful. And I avoided taking any more after taking those two. <laughs> <laughs> but those, sir, those don't necessarily <laughs> expire. I That's think good it's. To know. I think it's strongly encouraged to review. To review. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. um, yes. I know some of them I've done mul multiple times. It's just remembering whether it was 19 or 20 when I last renewed them. That's good. Has everybody had a chance to go over the uh, emergency management um, mm -hmm. plan and your names and contact numbers? If so, I entertain a motion on this. I make the motion to approve the local emergency management plan as presented to us by Bruce Richardson. And also we have the backup documentation here with us as well. And we'll sign off on that tonight if it's approved. Your second? I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Anything else you need, Bruce? No, that's it. Uh, just a thanks to the chief for uh, becoming the emergency management director for the town. Okay. Thank you, Bruce. Thank that's you, it. Bruce. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. Um,
Thank you. The, uh, townwide reappraisal line. Okay, so I know we're going to be sending out an RFP if we haven't already because we feel that we are going to be needing a reappraisal. The last time we had a reappraisal was 2008. So I went back and looked it up to see what the fees were, and then I wanted to just discuss how much money we have in the account. So back in 2008 and it ended in 2009, we spent 133,549.71. That's what we spent for fees to, I think it was the, the company that we use right now, Vermont, um, uh, the one that we were using right now anyways. Uh, so that's the, we had spent 133 for them. Then we also at that time had listers on the payroll. And they worked, did a lot of work on it as well. And so I just included their salaries just so that we'd have a, a basis. So it looks like 60495 is what we paid them. So I'm saying all in all that for the 2008, we spent 194000 basically. And then after that, there's a few fees, another like $5,500 worth of fees that we had to spend for appeal expense we had to spend with the state. So that's how much we're looking at. So now I bring it up to the current day, and I don't know how many properties they looked at at that time. I did not find that. I just found the numbers that we spent. So what I did is I looked at the 411 report for last year, which gives us how many properties we have. So I'm showing for commercial industry, we have like 220 properties, mobile homes 199. Now mobile homes we don't have to do again because we did that like two years ago. And then residential and others 1,059. Okay, so that's how many properties we have. And right now, we have in our reappraisal fund in the reserve, 225000 So I think we have a good amount there. Then what I did is I knew that Berrytown had done a reappraisal last year. So I looked at their newsletter to see if I could compare to, you know, see how much they spend to compare to them. They have about 3,500 properties, which obviously is a lot more than us. And as of August of last year, they spent 214000 So I do feel that the 225000 we have is adequate. And obviously, before we do have another reappraisal, we will be adding at least another 13000 maybe $26,000 to that number. And like I said, we've already done the mobile homes, so we will not have to do those again for another few years. Hmm. So just to make you aware, that's money we have. And I'll just keep you updated as time goes along. That's excellent. Scheduling of that Great is data. going to be an issue as well. If we, again, if the board approves going out for RFP tonight, um, we'll get that out. I, I would expect somewhere between three to six months to make a selection. And then probably another, and correct me if I'm wrong, Diane, probably another 12 to 18 months uh, before they're even going to get us on the schedule for reappraisal. So we're looking at reappraisal uh, probably actually two years out. Uh, based on what's going on around, around, yeah, I think Barry Towns is actually, or Barry City's just yeah. scheduled one and it's a year and a half out or something, 18 yeah. months or, yeah, yeah. two years. Or two years so. so, how much, um, how much money is the state uh, paying per law? Uh, per, uh, per, uh, I don't know how much it is per parcel, but I can tell you that this past year, we received $13,200, and that's right around the amount that we receive each year. So the year before that was 13269 and the year before that, 13760 So I can't tell you how much it is per parcel just based on this, yes. um, but that's what we've been getting each year for the last three years. Have you heard anything about them raising the uh, amount per parcel? No. Nope. No, nope. I get very little information on that. So you're looking for an RFP on this? Um, have to go out? Yeah. Yeah. I we're thought looking you had for one. approval to have that go out. Okay. Have a motion? I make the motion to move forward with the town wide reappraisal and all that is needed to move that forward. Here a second. Second. Any further discussion on this? How how much do you expect it to cost after the, this reappraisal? How much would you expect it to cost? How much do you think we're going to have to put into the pot to get our, our balance back up? Um, before, 
we, we, we had a surplus and we took in, we were putting, I think, about 10,000 a year. We did for, uh, there was yeah, quite a few years that I saw that we had done that, um, but not every year. You know, I think we stopped doing it, actually, the 10,000 stopped in 2013. Well, we, so, had, we had a surplus. Well, we figured we had enough. Right, yes, yeah. and that's why. That is why. So I don't know how much we'll end up spending. I, I'd like to think it won't be like 250000 yeah. It should be a lot less than that, considering what Barry Town spent, and they have a lot more properties than us. Mm -hmm. So not knowing. Obviously, after the RFP, we will know a lot more at that point in time, and then we can really plan ahead. Yeah. Okay. Because usually, our, you know, reappraisal, you don't do that more than, you know, once in 10 years or more. Well, does, does the state put out any guidelines as to how often they want it done? Uh, no, what they do is they send you uh, information on when they do this post the CLA, they'll tell you where you stand at that point in time. And I know that last year that they had written in their letter that they were recommending we start looking at that. What's our CLA at now? I mean, last time I heard it was like 100% or 110. 105 or something like that. Yeah. yeah, I don't have it right here, but it was 105. But they're saying if it's, you know, if it's way over 100%, you should do a reappraisal. If it's like 85% or less, you should do a reappraisal. So since we were over that mark, they're saying we should do a reappraisal. And just, I think the CLA is going to change tremendously because of the sale of the homes in the last year have just been... Yeah. So much higher than what we've appraised these homes for. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them have sold for a lot more than the appraisal that we have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, um, Thank you, Diane. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, now would probably be a good time to do your additions. Yes, sir. So, uh, in your packet, there is a, a uh, quote for Fisher Road paving for us. Um, the timing is good. We did, we did reach out to a couple others. Hutchins comes to mind. Um, they, they didn't bid. Um, so no, nobody else bid. Um, uh, Pike is, is, prices are going up like everything else. Um, they also have some work from last year that they need to do um, early spring for us as well. So they can, if we um, get approval tonight, they can get that on the schedule, probably to pave um, by or before the end of May on Fisher Road. Now the only question that I have is I see on it, it says that the price is valid through March 18th of 22. Yeah, we've talked so about that. So what yeah. would that change in terms of the pricing? The if price this is only change. valid, oh, this is gonna stay the that, same now. That quote will stay the same. We've talked to them about that. Excellent. So, um, this is for just at the uh, Fisher Road. That's just for Fisher Road. The others were have already been approved. They just didn't get it scheduled last year. Okay. And they're holding those prices. There's no increase since it went over, obviously. So. So you sent a number of them out, and Pike was the only one that answered. Yep. Okay. Yep. Sure. I make when, the. When does this have to be? When does this have to be approved? As soon as possible, to get them to get it scheduled for for May. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. I make the motion to approve the bid from Pike Industries Incorporated. They were the only uh, company that did bid, and they are going to hold the price of $46,780.20. And I make the motion that we move forward with that bid. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries. Brad, I just want to interrupt because uh, I have one thing that I did forget to add um, before we get to that, and that's the chief is here. He wants to uh, share a few things with the board tonight as well. Oh, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Ta -da. So to help supplement our training program, uh, we kind of focus on the high liability areas, use of force, driving, motor vehicle stuff, uh, and our firearms. Um, so I've been looking out 
for alternative ways to supplement our program. One of those is to kind of get into technology. There's a lot of uh, digital type of technology, um, virtual reality, if you will, to supplement people's firearm program. They vary widely in cost. I think one of the last people that I spoke to is close to $100,000 for uh, virtual reality firearms training program. Um, a lot of that type of programming is you have to pay per user. So in that case, they wanted us to pay like $100, $200 per officer per month to maintain this program so they could log in on their own and keep track of their own training records. So a lot of this technology is, it's a subscription, essentially. You have to pay for it month to month or year to year. I was able to find a program called Dark Technologies that have a mobile um, projection system that it gives us a lot of the opportunities that the other virtual reality programs does, but it's like a fraction of the cost. This program allows you to take essentially a laptop and a small projector and bring it anywhere. Like for instance, I could bring it in here, project it on the, on the back of the wall, and it would run officers through firearm simulations. It would include anything from range type of training to work on very basic firearm skills, um, like sight alignment, um, trigger pull, those type of things to actual use of force scenarios where you have to use your de-escalation skills, which is a critical skill that they're, the state is really hammering these days. Um, so it allows us to work anywhere from the basics to the more advanced stuff. Um, it has a lot of benefits in that because it's so mobile, easy to set up, any one of our officers can use it. Um, you can take 10 minutes, 15 minutes at the end of shift, the beginning of shift, and run them through a scenario work on skills, if someone's struggling at the range, for example. A couple times a week, you can come in 15 minutes early to shift, literally put someone up on the wall and work on basic skills. Um, it is very difficult to get all of us as a department up at the range to do any kind of meaningful training. It can be difficult because of the weather. Uh, basically, nine months out of the year, we're not really able to get up to the range because of weather. Um, and ammunition is extremely expensive these days. There's a long wait out for it. It would take up to six to nine months for us to get ammunition. So um, it is not feasible or realistic for us to go up to the range and use actual ammo every time you want to train or supplement our training. This gives us an opportunity to really uh, give us a, a, a bonus uh, and help us out with those areas. It is a little on the pricey side. It runs in just under $10,000. I think they quoted me at about 9,800. There are add-ons that are fairly inexpensive that you can add on after that, such as a rifle and other pistols, so you can do partner drills um, and various other technology that we could look at down the road if we're able to buy into this. There's no subscription fee. Once they give it to us, it's ours, um, which is a huge plus. Uh, and we can bring it with us anywhere. We bring it over to school and practice like after shooter type of training. I can literally put it at the top of the stairway and practice officers going up the stairway and encountering some kind of threat or situation. Put it out into a garage and have officers run through what it's like to get out of a car and engage someone. Uh, so there's a lot of mobility and versatility to the program that would be beneficial to us that we really couldn't get anywhere else. So I sent out a link to Vince and I'm not sure if anybody got a chance to look at it, but it does run you what through what the program does and what the simulator is capable of doing. Um, a lot of small PDs have signed on to it just because it's so versatile and relatively inexpensive when compared to the alternatives. This sounds like something that a lot of uh, departments must use. Is there any uh, potential for, for a grant? For a purchase of we have asked purchase? for it in a grant. Uh, we have a technology grant right now that we've submitted a, a bunch of items that the PD needs, but what, it's a shot in the dark, um, to excuse the pun, to whether or not we're going to get that grant. Um, we have some money in our training budget that, could, that would help offset the cost of it. Um, but so the answer is yes, there's money out there for grants. We have applied for them, but one, I have no idea when this grant might be accepted, even if we were. We're looking probably at a year out, um, and the chances of us getting a small PD like we are is pretty small. Vince, are, op 
app funds usable for this? Yes, they are. What's the total cost to you? About 9800 just short of 10000 Per person? Or? That's the whole unit. That would get running, get us up and running for the whole PD. How and much then would you month, do? I'm sorry. There's That's no okay, monthly subscription, no. unlike all these other programs. Okay. Once we get that, we've got all the software, all the equipment we need to be up and running. You have access costs. to software updates. Yeah, all that stuff. Um, if we want additional modules for training, yeah, there, it does cost us additional money. But they do give us a basic, like, 30-module um, training program that would get us up and going. Um, anything beyond that, we'd have to buy whatever the package is. Do you have any network connection with any other force that's that's using this current, this dark technology? Um, there are variations on this technology. Um, not any that we have, like the Academy used to have a simulator. That's not something that's readily available to us. Uh, other agencies that might have simulators such as this, it's just a scheduling issue getting down there. Well, I was more thinking uh, whether or not, you know, like on Amazon, I always read the comments right. if I'm going to buy a new swimming pool or whatever. So, so I've had I, I several conversations yeah, with this salesperson and the others that I've dealt with. Um, there's real low pressure sales pitch. Uh, these former law enforcement or the people that train the program are former law enforcement. Um, so I have, they're out of Florida. Um, so my experience with them has been good and very professional. That's really the only thing I can say about it. It's pretty basic software. And they just happen to kind of tailor it towards law enforcement. They have a lot of military contracts. Uh, would they be willing to give you a demo before you purchased it, or like it, so let, to let you or other officers try it, or community members or select Probably, board members? Because it sounds pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, I can check, but because they're out of Florida, I think it, the logistics of that are probably pretty difficult. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's not uncommon to do training and evaluation, um, testing and evaluation, but I think just because of the logistics, it would be really difficult to. <coughs> but well, would yeah, you once we had it up here, I'd love to select mm -hmm. board to try it. We would too. What would you consider your savings would be with a program such as this in terms of the ammunition? Um, it's hard to compare because we're not doing the training because we're not going to go out and use real ammo. Um, but I, you know, it's probably fifty dollars for a box of ammo these right. days. Um, it's very the time to get up to the range. So we're looking at several hundred dollars at least for just a couple hours of training. Mm -hmm that we don't do currently. Right. We go up to the firearm twice a year, to the firearms range twice a year, and that's the only firearms training we do just because it's logistically difficult to do anything else. Mm -hmm. Occasionally we piggyback on the very city, they do active shooter training once a year, um, and simulations, and that's always really valuable training, but I can only afford to send one or two officers um, at a time. Uh, like this year, uh, Sergeant Monteith went through, he was the only one that I could send because of our staffing program like this, a sergeant can stay over 15 minutes with the oncoming shift and work through some scenarios, so, and it would cost us nothing. How many users will this handle? Um, two currently, and we could buy additional <coughs> modules, firearm modules, from here on out to run through different types of scenarios. Yeah. Like but I mean, how many, how many officers can use this? Oh, all of them. Oh, that's, yeah. Yeah. So it's. Yeah. No, I'm, I thought you meant at the same time. Concurrently. No, no. Yeah. Um, so, unlike other systems that I've looked at, there's no, like, you, every officer I've got to pay an initial yeah. kind of subscription for, and this is it. We can do whatever we want with the program once we get it. And they even suggest that you could go to bring it down to Barry City and let them run through it. They don't, they don't care. Thing is ours to do with what we want. I got you. You you wouldn't necessarily stop going to the range. No, not at all. We so, said right. Must, yeah. So this is this is just supplementing. Mm -hmm. And the training council, pretty much every other year, kind of increases the difficulty of our firearms training and certification, which is good. And they should, um, but it, it's ever challenging to meet those new certifications when we really don't have an opportunity to train other than here you are, here are the new certifications, good luck. Uh, we don't have any opportunity to kind of 
do in-house training before that annual training every year. Do you know if there's any savings through VLTC on this through our insurance? Um, not that specifically. I don't. I don't know that it's going to cost. It probably wouldn't be any savings to us insurance-wise. They do have grants that will cover risk management type of things mm -hmm. like body armor and our yeah. cameras. Um, I don't think it would cover anything like this. Okay. Well, in looking at this, as far as how much money you have left, uh, we have <coughs> uh, we have budgeted eight thousand dollars. And we spent $3,300 so far. Do you think you'll spend anything else before the end of this year on training? I, because maybe a couple of hundred dollars here and there, but I can't send okay. the officers to training. Because train. that right there is like, okay, if I subtract the 3309 that's 4691 that we have left over. And then you were saying as far as the bullets go, I think we spent like 200 and something dollars on bullets. Okay, we had twenty four, twenty five hundred dollars that we budgeted. So that looks to me to be, you know, basically six, seven thousand dollars that we have available in our budget for this year. Fiscal year. Yeah, yeah. fiscal year twenty two. And since we're almost done, I can't imagine that these numbers will get much larger. Mm -hmm. So that's something to consider. Mm -hmm. So, chief, you feel you can get this purchase this out of your existing budget in the, in the uh, incoming budget? Yeah, I do. Do you think you could negotiate with them some on the pricing? No, I think they gave us their rock bottom starting price. Mm -hmm. I explained the situation to them that we're <laughs> working bare bonds. Mm -hmm. They threw in like an extra rifle simulator, I think, mm -hmm. to kind of offset the cost a little bit. Sweeten the deal. Yeah. I see potential for uh, something like this. Obviously, for training, uh, it, it's helpful uh, for preparedness, but recruitment and retention, because it's something that uh, is, you know, making the officers better officers, and it's interesting. I am trying actually to think outside the box. Fun yeah. to me, actually, to do. But <laughs> it, and there's a benefit to that to make it not so stressful. You put yeah. someone who's inexperienced on the range with a firearm in their hand, it, it mm. can be a stressful experience. Mm -hmm. um, but this is uh, a way to get people in, to be a safe environment. There's really no stress involved and get the fundamentals down. But you're right, it has potential to be a recruiting tool. Mm -hmm. I am trying to think outside the box as far mm -hmm. as training goes. And, mm -hmm. So what are you looking for from the board here? Just a green light to go ahead and purchase this because it is on the pricier side. So it's over the $5,000 limit. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, I don't know if we need to put this on the next one and warn it or not. It's money that you already have. So We'll take a risk here, and um, I have a motion on this. So, are we putting it on the next meeting? I'm warning no. it, or just making a motion now? Yeah, because I mean, the money's already been approved. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, it, it's just the the it's over five thousand. I think Chief needs uh, would like to have us uh, stand behind him on this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we will be over budget for about two thousand from everything I'm. Doing. I think we'll be over budget by about two thousand dollars from what he's from saying. This year's funds. Yeah. Yes, but if you end up having it next year, I don't know when you're going to get this. Do you think it'll be in FY twenty two, or do you think it'll be in July of next year, or this year? What time we actually get to get it? Wait, I'm shooting for this year. Yeah. In June. Before, before July. Yes. Before, before July. July. Correct. Okay. So then we would be over budget by at least a couple thousand. But then it'll be made up with the with the new budget. Or some funds from well, technology it work that way, but <laughs> yeah. There's also yeah. some money left over in our equipment budget. I think police equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we do. We have a, a few grand there. Yep. PD fund, I guess six thousand dollars in there. And this may not be possible, but I'll throw this out for discussion. Is there any money or any entity through the state that might be willing to assist us, given everything you've been doing at Hilltop? 
etc., etc., etc. I was tempted to send the Commissioner of Children and Family Services an invoice for a call out we had this weekend, but I thought it was not in good form, so I refrained mm -hmm. from doing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Understood. So I make the motion to go forward with the presentation um, by our chief of the police department to go forward with the mobile projection firearms simulation. Most of the money for it is in the budget already, uh, FY22. And if I have it pronounced properly, dark reality? Yeah. Yes. At a cost of approximately 9800 to $10,000 with add-ons and uh, uh, there is a technology grant that has been applied for and some funds could possibly come out of that as well. Your second. second. Any further discussion on this? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank, thank you. you for your forward thinking. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's exciting. It should be exciting. Reserve some time on there, Chief, for Carl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to showing the board. Absolutely. Is there anything else as far as uh, additions? Vince? No, that's it. Okay. Uh, approval of licenses, permits, vouchers. I would just ask for the paperwork. It's probably at the front of that purple binder at the very top inside. I haven't had a chance to look at it yet, so I haven't seen it. I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 22-21 for payroll from March 27th of this year through April 9th of 2022 paid on April 13th, 2022 in the amount of $49,244.69. Payable warrant 22-G20 with checks 21937 to 21971 in the amount of $48,590.92 and the VITA ACH payment number one for Fisher Road Culvert Project in the amount of $20,518.02, the March Trial Balance Report, March Budget Status Report, and the March General Journal Entries. Near a second. A second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, Approval of minutes from uh, 21st of February, March 7th, 2022, and March 21st, 2022, and March 24th, 2022. And the add-on for April, please. Uh, uh, the uh, <laughs> minutes for April 4th, 2022. Make a motion that we accept the minutes as written. Second. Any other discussion? If not, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And round table, Carl. Yeah, I, and uh, this is just maybe thinking outside the box and thinking about our, uh, our departments uh, being taxed with the hilltop. I was, and I'm not real familiar with that uh, that facility. But do they have a conference room? Have any any type? At that? They do. They do. You know, we're or thinking about uh, dealing with that, and it is part of our community. And they are, whether they're placed here, they move here, they choose here, they're still part of our community. And we're thinking about and reacting to that location um, with with law enforcement, but. Maybe there's something the state would be more willing to contribute to than, than law enforcement after the fact. And I was thinking if they have a conference room, it would make sense because a lot of what the chief described to us happening there is because of substance abuse, uh, conflict management, anger management, uh, maybe um, you know, possible counseling <laughs> needs or uh, that um, maybe the state would be willing to contribute in, in a way to have some type of um, daily or weekly or whatever possible group therapy sessions for anger management, substance abuse, counseling there as far as 
you know, anything like uh, an Alcoholics Anonymous or, or anything that um, the state would be willing to contribute to, facilitate. And I was thinking even, I'm sure there are a lot of faith-based um, churches or, or synagogues or, or whatever that would be willing to go there and offer up something as a way to uh, preemptively prevent the difficulty for our, for our police department. So it's just an idea I had and I wanted to share it with the rest of the board to, to think about, you know, there's, there, there are people there and they are our neighbors right now. And, mm -hmm. you know, we can either try to help them or we can just look to at them as a problem, you know, and unfortunately it is a difficulty for our police department, but maybe there's a way we can take that burden off without it having to be law enforcement doing it. It's a good suggestion. I know that the hospital used to do many of those types of training. I'm not sure if they still do, but I think I think it's definitely worth looking into further. You know, and I'm thinking, you know, if the state has pizza and soft drinks uh, to attract people to go to these meetings or, or whatever, you know, sometimes all it takes is a, a seed planted to, to help somebody make good decisions in, in a time where they may not otherwise without hearing that uh, bit of wisdom from somebody that cares. Mm -hmm. Vince, can you get a hold, uh, have, are you and the chief can get a hold of uh, Children Family Services and see if they'd be willing to sponsor something like that? Yep. Yes, I can. Anything else, Carl? I'm not sure if it's roundtable, but uh, I, I would like to just throw this out there again. We are, we're going to be coming upon a situation because of the res resignation of our town clerk where we may have the opportunity to, uh, because we're appointing a position or two possibly, um, to really structure, um, and I know we don't have dominion over that position, but we can structure at least when we're appointing uh, our job description <laughs> Uh, our expectations of the appointed town clerk and if it's a new assistant town clerk it may be an opportunity for us to really structure those job descriptions in a way that we make uh, the town office um, more of a team and working together to complete all of the missions uh, that that we need completed to, to have a su successful town and I am thinking of Diane's being overwhelmed and doing a great job by the way but it, I'd, I'd love to think that um, you weren't you know thrown on an island by yourself and if you needed help that maybe it could come from other individuals in that in that area so really defining uh, what our dream uh, uh, before we appoint a town clerk and an assistant town clerk, if, if those two positions, or maybe just one of them, are, become open, uh, what we would like th them to do if, if we are to appoint them. I think the state's pretty well uh, spelled that out for us. Yeah. <laughs> because of, most of the town clerks do use their statute. Yeah. Yeah, well, if you look at other towns, though, their structures are, are quite different than ours. Yeah. and. and and our, our town clerk uh, and our assistant town clerk. Uh, typically there's an, an overlap where the treasurer is the clerk, assistant clerk, and the clerk is the assistant treasurer in most towns. It, and I, I looked at quite a few just to see how it worked in other places, so. You just have to make sure they're comparable to Berlin. Yeah, maybe. You know, with, yeah. the, with the, a large economic base. Right, we can't tell an elected town clerk what we want, but if we're going to appoint somebody, we can give them a list of expectations, what we hope they do yeah. when we appoint them. So at this one opportunity, we have a chance to, to move the ball in a good direction. Anything else? Carol? No, That's it. I'm done. Hello? I would just like to open up for um, just the conversation that I still would like to go forward with us having a conversation with Rosemary and perhaps even Corinne, if, if they both would, would do so, um, and just have an open discussion, you know, to foster the communication between both entities in terms of going forward, because I really respect, as you said at the last meeting, everything Rosemary's done for us as well as Corinne. Diane does a fabulous job, and 
I know that we respect everything they do and I want them to know that as well and they've got a lot of knowledge that they can bring forward and impart upon us and I welcome that. Anything else? That's it. Joe? Well I guess I, I would echo the topic you know that's that day is coming coming soon um, and, and and I guess she uh, Rosemary could could take her resignation letter back probably in time, but we should plan for that. Um, and I think the conversation between the, the board and the, the two or as individuals would be um, well worth having. Mm -hmm. Vince? Two questions based on the board's roundtable. One for Carl. Um, is that uh, town clerk position something that you want me to draft something for you guys to review that includes the statutes and, and thoughts just to, to prompt thought on the board's behalf so you can look at it and add and delete as you feel necessary? Is that something that you're looking for me to do? Or would you like to initiate it and then share it with Vince and then we all could have input? I'd, I'd do it either way, I guess. Uh, you're. I'm sure you're more knowledgeable exactly what, and, and I'd be, you know, I'd be willing to research it and put more in it, or you could do it better. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll come up something and I'll work with you directly on it. Okay. So we'll decide from there, or you'll decide from there if you want to bring it to the rest of the board or how okay. we approach that. Second question is similar topic, um, based on what uh, Flo brought up, is for the uh, conversation with the board with the town clerk. Is that something that you want me to put on an upcoming agenda? And invite her to, or sure. them to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Most definitely. I'll, I'll I'll get that on the agenda. Thank you in both regards. In the executive session, expected events. No, sir. Uh, motion to adjourn. We had seen this in there. Do we need to discuss that at all? It was in the packet. To indicate about putting it on the next agenda. Or was that just for our knowledge? Swim lessons? The swim lessons. Oh, the swim lessons. This is for to to this round that table. That's right. Okay, yeah, because we talked about it earlier. I just forgot yeah. we talked a little bit about it. Sorry. Uh, yeah, the swim lessons. Uh, the town in the past had put like $1,500 in for swim lessons on a budget. But the last two years, we have not done anything for a budget. And obviously, the last two years especially, there were no swim lessons. Right. Actually, it was your wife and myself that used to work on the swim lessons right. together all the time. So now we have a rec board that wants us <coughs> to consider paying for the swim lessons. We don't have any money in the budget for FY22 or FY23. However, um, the rec board does have $5,000 available to it at this point in time. And I invited the person that asked about the swim lessons to join us tonight, but they haven't. And it's $25 per student resident reimbursement? That's what we've been doing in the past. So mm -hmm. we, we a cap it at $25 per student. And I think it was normally about $30 or $35, and the parent picked up the rest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what we've done in the past. But. Do you know what the new prices for the swim lessons are going to be? I don't. I don't, because the information you've given is what information I have. And I had invited that person to talk to us tonight. And that, that person would be from the rec board? Yeah. Okay. Good. And, and so it would be the rec board putting Correct. And I know that Vince the money. has talked to the rec board about Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I think there's probably ought to bring that up in another agenda, I guess. Yeah, I, I've got a note on this one to put it on the agenda for May 2nd. Excellent. Um, the rec board is, is in action. They're talking to Montpelier about that, <coughs> excuse me, as well. So hopefully by then um, we'll have more information and we'll have the, someone from the rec committee here as well. Uh, to speak to it and where they're at with Montpelier. Okay, anything else for the round table then? If not, entertain a motion to adjourn. I make the motion to adjourn tonight's select board meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. We are adjourned.